Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Norville, bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. St. Lucia was spared the effects of heavy rainfall associated with Tropical Storm Isaac. Minister of Responsibility for External Affairs speaks on U.S. visa interview waivers. IBSA collaboration bears fruit and family and friends bid farewell to Botham Shem Jure. St. Lucia was spared the effects of heavy rainfall associated with Tropical Storm Isaac, which was expected to produce 50 to 100 millimeters on the island from September 12 to 14, 2018. The center of Isaac passed between Martinique and Dominica, with maximum sustained winds of about 45 miles per hour. The system has now weakened into a tropical depression, and convection associated with Isaac diminished considerably. Isaac is expected to dissipate within the next few days. The cloud system associated with Isaac remains poorly organized and St. Lucia fell between the rain bands of Isaac, hence the island has thus far not received the expected rainfall. However, cloudiness and showers trailing tropical depression Isaac will continue to affect the Lesser Antilles, including St. Lucia during the next 24 hours. Residents, especially those in flood and landslide prone areas, are to be vigilant and small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to locally rough seas. Minister of Responsibility for External Affairs, the Honorable Sarah Flood Bobre, has welcomed the decision by the U.S. Embassy to implement interview visa waivers in St. Lucia for qualified applicants wishing to renew their U.S. visas. This came into effect Monday, September 10, 2018. Minister Flood Bobre says there are many benefits aligned with this decision. We know, for example, the cost of air tickets to Barbados, to and from. Most persons applying for non-immigrant visas would have to pay uh, the high cost of these tickets, would have to overnight in accommodations, in addition, of course, to the uh, fees that have to be paid for the visas, the monies that have to be paid to have the visas or passports FedEx back. And we know how exorbitant that can be, especially when you have a number of family members applying. And for many, many years now, solutions have had to spend all this money uh, in applying for a U.S. visa, and sometimes it is even rejected. So we can see immediately what the benefits of that decision is, and we do welcome this and thank the United States government for considering uh, doing this at this time. St. Lucian passport holders, with the exception of beneficiaries of the Citizenship by Investment programs, may qualify for a visa renewal interview waiver if their previous visa expired within the past 12 months. One would have to go online and fill in the usual application form and then one knows whether or not he or she in fact uh, can proceed without having to be present at the U.S. Embassy for the visa interview. So the uh, waiver of the in interview is not automatic, but the, what the rule, what the new rule says is that we are now eligible, providing we meet certain criteria. So as the Ministry of External Affairs, we will be continuing to monitor this to see um, how, how, how many solutions, in fact, are able to benefit from this and we would encourage our citizens to continue to be in touch with us so that we can receive information firsthand. The applicant must be physically present in St. Lucia or within the consular district of the U.S. Embassy in Bridgetown, Barbados to avail themselves of this opportunity. Additionally, the previous U.S. visa must be in the applicant's possession. Students who wish to renew their visas and who satisfy the aforementioned requirements may qualify for interview waiver if they are applying to continue attendance at the same institution or will continue the same major course of study at a different institution. Applicants seeking to renew work-related visas who are returning to work for the same employer or company 
as annotated on the previous visa may also qualify. Applicants under the age of 14 and over the age of 79 years will continue to qualify for interview waiver in most visa classifications. Applicants who acquired St. Lucia citizenship via an economic citizenship program and all third country nationals will still be required to schedule visa interviews for visa renewals. The Prime Minister of Barbados during the last meeting of the Council of Ministers of Finance and Planning, COFAP, highlighted the critical role played by the organization in advancing CARICOM single market and economy, CSME. Listing the region's many challenges, she asserted that immediate action was required to undo the damage which is currently being done, not only to the country's economic stability, but also to its citizens. This was the second meeting of the Council of Ministers of Finance and Planning, COFAP, held in three months, following a five-year period since the last meeting was held. Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, highlighted some of the common challenges faced by CARICOM member states, which include but are not limited to the EU blacklisting and the continued struggle to stabilize economies and financial services. Motley further stated that the fact that countries continue to attract investments in a way that undermined other countries' stability reiterated the need for common community investment policy and code. When we look at the investment policy code, that was first settled as far back, I think, as 2008 or 2009, so that we are talking about almost a decade in the wilderness in the absence of being able to settle some of these critical initiatives, um, that this meeting can bring us closer to settling and signing off on them, that we can enhance the ability of our citizens to be able to access credit by putting a framework in place that protects both the individual citizen as well as the financial institution is absolutely critical if we are going to give true expression to improving the lot of our citizens. She urged COFAP to address that which is fundamentally linked to the competitiveness of the single market, but related to how the economy functions. These, she said, must be advanced if CARICOM is to take the matter of single market to the next level. And I refer to the question of integra the integrated capital markets of our region. Um, all of us are having access problems with respect to capital. Um, too many of our citizens in the productive sectors, too many of our companies in the productive sectors are complaining about their inability to be able to access capital um, in, in ways that make sense and at costs that make sense. And to the extent, therefore, that we can allow for the surplus liquidity in markets to be able to flow to other markets, um, we will have added value to, to our general ability to move towards greater growth in the region. According to Prime Minister Motley, the decisions made at COFAP meeting are critical to the advancement of the CSME. The CARICOM Single Market and Economy CSME is an arrangement among the CARICOM states for the creation of a single and large economic space for the removal of restrictions resulting in the free movement of goods, services, people, capital and technology. St. Lucia's legal fraternity on Friday bid farewell to one of its most revered members. Anissa Antoine attended the special sitting of the High Court held to honor Marcus Peter Foster. Members of the legal fraternity gathered at the Parliament chambers for a special sitting of the OECS court to pay tribute to the late Marcus Peter Foster, also known as Ole or Harry, who passed away on September 4, 2018. Marcus Foster is the son of Kenneth Foster, who is a member of the inner bar and stems from a well-established family in the law field. In 1992, he became the proprietor of Marcus Foster and Associates and contributed immensely to the law system in St. Lucia during his tenure as an attorney. In correspondence from his brother-in-law, Marcus is described as one of St. Lucia's most distinguished jurisprudential minds that ever lived. I concur with that sentiment and with permission adopt it now as my own. In that same document, Marcus is described as making an indelible contribution to regional jurisprudence 
which reflects his profound intellectual standing. He was also described as being assiduous and endowed with creativity, ingenuity, and possessing a cognitive flexibility of first grade steel. Again, with all of these sentiments, I concur, and with permission, adopt them now as my own. To me, Marcus had clearly ma mastered his craft. He was persuasive in closing, swift with counter-legal arguments, winning in closing where he may have lost on submissions, or winning on submissions where he could not win in closing. All this he accomplished, not with venom and animosity, but with casual confidence, a matter-of-fact style that was seasoned always with wit and humor. Marcus Foster was a past student of the St. Mary's College, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, the University of the West Indies Cave Hill, and graduated from the U. Wooden Law School in 1989. He had the capacity to and did help lawyers, both junior and senior, and all lawyers acknowledged that he was a repository of legal genius. Despite this in his character, he had a sense of humility, cloaked in wit, and had a natural ability of concealing his pain in laughter and humor. The funeral service of the late Marcus Peter Foster will be held on Tuesday, September 18th at the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. This is Nation Beat. We're back after this break. When you're out at sea, there are no service stations along the way or supermarkets for a quick stop if you need something. It is essential that everything you will need while at sea is on the boat before you leave. That's why pre-sea checks are so important. Checks should be carried out by more than one person to ensure that all essentials are on board. Everything on board? Yeah, everything there. Still to make sure. The with that, same boy. Pre-sea checks should include food stores, extra water and fuel, navigational equipment, safety gear and communication yep. equipment. Okay, light out, sir. That's what I'm doing. Before heading out to sea, always ensure that all equipment is in working order, you are stocked up on food and also extra fuel. Call the lighthouse to inform them of your voyage plan and inform someone responsible of your departure time and estimate the time of arrival back on shore. For more information on obtaining a license to fish, contact the Department of Fisheries at 468-4143. Welcome back. An ongoing farming project established in conjunction with the India-Brazil-South Africa IBSA Fund has yielded several successes. Dr. Darrell Best, veterinarian and animal husbandry officer in the Ministry of Agriculture, said the IBSA project addressed several sector challenges. We've done or what we've actually tried to do um, for the IPSA fund, we've actually done different segments or, 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 or different cohorts. Our first um, thing was that we actually brought in some new bloodlines of both sheep and goat into the island to help improve our bloodlines and, and, and improve the, the quality of animals that we can make available to the farmers and therefore for the farmers to the general public. Mm -hmm. That has been ongoing for at least a year, two years now and we're actually getting our offsprings out to the farmers and, and the farmers are getting some good results from the offsprings and therefore they can help now produce or profilate these animals. The IBSA grant also provided for educational opportunities for both farmers and technical agriculture officers. In St. Lucia, we've uh, accomplished thus far three farmer field schools, um, one in small ruminants, swine, and poultry. Um, these, this is where we actually bring the practical knowledge to the farmers, not in a not in a, in, a, in, a, in a school setting, but a farmer setting. So we actually go out to the farms. Mm -hmm. we actually, it's very hands-on. Another part of it is the um, AI. 
right. AI is artificial in insemination, where we've actually trained farmers, um, trained some farmers and our te te technical staff in the procedures of artificial insemination. Um, we've had um, our own officers go overseas um, to Jamaica via CADI to do the to actually learn these um, kind of um, 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 techniques. We've actually held our own AI workshop in St. Lucia sometime last year. Dr. Best said the workshops have been successful in educating farmers about new practices and preparing them to implement similar procedures. The IBSA project aims to alleviate poverty by improving farming practices. It is being implemented by the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, of the United Nations in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture. The St. Lucia Electoral Department encourages the young and the marginalized to participate in the electoral process. This week, the world observes the International Day of Democracy. The United Nations Secretary General sees this as an opportunity to invigorate democracy by bringing the young and marginalized into the political system. Assistant Chief Elections Officer of St. Lucia's Electoral Department, Olympia Lionel, says her department has taken measures to encourage and accommodate such groups. I must say we're fortunate in the Caribbean that St. Lucia is the only country as it relates to democracy that has taken democracy to the second shutdown at the hospital. In 2016, um, SI number 13, 2016, um, the law was amended that we can go to a hospital or a care institution to allow those persons to exercise their franchise where at the last general elections, persons were able to cast the ballot right at their bedside. For the care institutions, we were able to do a mobile unit where persons were able to exercise their franchise and for us to move on to the other institution. Lionel also unveiled her department's efforts to further educate citizens on the process of attaining ID cards in an effort to encourage persons to participate in the electoral process. We had a number of issues with the general public in terms of the services we provide and as of last year we had um, instituted this customer service desk where we created checklists with the different requirements for a new registrant, a non-elector, to change your address if you change your name. So somebody come into electoral department would go to the customer service desk where the customer service rep would check our system and let you know what is required for whatever transaction you come in to do. International Day of Democracy is observed annually on September 15. The observance was established through a resolution passed by the United Nations General Assembly in 2007. St. Lucians both here and in the diaspora watched the live stream of the memorial service for Bertram Shemjian, who was shot and killed in his Dallas apartment last Thursday. The more than a four-hour long service was marked by worship, praise, stories about Jia's adventures, endeavors, and aspirations. His uncle, former government minister Ignatius Jia, eulogized the 26-year-old. Carter School of Business at Botham's beloved Harding University asked me if I would consider helping a brilliant, highly Christ-centered, extremely personable, sterling young man from St. Lucia. They said we really only want you to do two things. Number one, obtain for him a quality internship in Dallas, hopefully, hopefully, with his first round draft pick, Price, Waterhouse, Cooper, PWC, no less. Both of them aimed high. Both of them aimed high in his pursuit of excellence in everything. PwC is hurting, not just in Dallas, but all across our country. And I want to thank you all for the opportunity to share what Bo meant to 55,000 people 
in PwC. I'm honored to pay tribute to Bo in his memory with all of you. For you are the people who love Bo and the people that Bo loved the most. And especially to Bo's family. I am amazed by your strength and I am in awe of what an incredible young man you raised. And I hope by my few words, I can give you the comfort that he will never be forgotten. My name is Todd Gentry. I'm the campus minister in Botham in 2011. I got to meet him. Later on, he became my intern in ministry. In 2011, Botham said, Todd, why don't you lead a group of students to my island of St. Lucia? It's a beautiful place. I've been leading students to other places uh, and doing other things. And so we got together in 2012 was our first trip to St. Lucia. I wish that all of you could see him in those moments. We went and worked with children that did not have parents. He was good with both the little ones and the old ones. We walked along the streets of Grosselie St. Lucia and helped everyone that needed something done, whether it meant taking a machete to a grown-up lot or fixing a door or just singing with people that needed a friend. We went to the juvenile detention center and let know a bunch of boys that needed hope that there was hope, and we played soccer. And in six years, they beat us once, but anyway. <laughs> and both of them wasn't a good soccer player. We went into the nursing homes of Castries and Viewfort, and both them Shaw loved those people, and he combed their hair, and he sang to them, and he loved them, and he cleaned up their messes. <clears throat> we went to the hospitals in Castries and Viewfort, and at every hospital bed we stopped and we prayed and we sang and we talked. That's who both of them was. I will miss him, but I will see him again. Because while I was his mentor, he touched me. And he changed me too. Botham was our prince. And as evidenced by the outpouring of expressions of outrage, love, sympathy, and solidarity from near and far, from the four corners of the globe, he was truly a prince of the people. Our star was about to complete his 27th orbit around the sun on the 29th of September. His brilliance had radiated a universe. We give thanks to the true and almighty God, Most High, for gracing us with the presence of this change agent that was Bo. Bon Dieu, s'il vous plaît, nous assoujons nous, capoué banou la force avec courage, nous capoué Dieu, Seigneur, pour la paix, nous capoué Dieu pour justice. Bon Dieu, banou la force avec courage. Aïe, 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 doudou. Pas pleuer comme ça. Pas pleuer comme ça. Ou kai kwasi tchemwe. Aïe, 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 maman. Pas pleuer comme ça. Pas pleuer comme ça. Ou kai kwasi tchemwe. Botham Shem Jia would have been 27 on September 29, 2018. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. I am Janelle Norville.